All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, we're gonna to be going over a great new feature that's finally made it into pretty much all of the Unify routers, and that is OpenVPN server support. It is now in Unify Network 7.4, so as long as you've got Unify 7.4, you should have OpenVPN server as an option. And this is actually my favorite VPN option, which is gonna get me a lot of hate on the internet because the internet absolutely loves WireGuard, but for my clients who are generally businesses, OpenVPN just makes a lot more sense than WireGuard does because OpenVPN has the options for user, user authentication, has way more support for a lot of devices, it's got a cleaner interface, it looks real, and it doesn't look like a hacked together solution. That's right now what WireGuard is at. WireGuard is very new and very, very, very fast, but it's okay in my opinion to give out some of that speed to get the stability and the use of OpenVPN. So personally, the majority of times I'm deploying something, I deploy a open VPN server just because it has all of the bells and whistles and everything's already been worked out, whereas WireGuard is still going through that. This tutorial is gonna go over how to install a open VPN server on your Unify router. So I'm gonna be doing this on a UDM Pro, and it's going to allow us to securely access anything behind the Unify that we need to. So if we've got a Synology, if we have a Plex box, if we have anything, we can securely access it as if we're on our local network remotely. And it's incredibly easy to set up and use. So there are a couple of prerequisites for this. You do need a public IP address. So if you come into your WAN IP right here and you see something that's like 192.168, 10.172.16, I always forget those, and you don't see a public IP address, that means you're likely not gonna be able to do this. The easiest way to tell, if you're not sure, is Google, what's my IPv4 address? And if it does not match the IP address that's shown on WAN IP, that means you do not have the public IP address hooked up to the UDM. So there are ways around this. You can do port forwarding from the upstream router to the Unify. You can put the upstream router in a bridge mode. You can ask your ISP nicely to port forward but in a lot of those cases, it might not be possible. And for cases where your ISP might not even give you a public IP address, such as Starlink, you are going to be somewhat out of luck for this. And you can look into other solutions like Tailscale. And so that's pretty much all you need from your ISP. This will work totally fine with a dynamic IP address. An IP address that's not static, meaning one that is updated every time. So maybe you turn on your router and you get a new public IP address. If you're not paying for a static IP address, you almost certainly have a dynamic IP address. We can still absolutely work with a dynamic IP address. All you need to do is use the DDNS server that is in Unify, and I will show that and leave a link down into the description below. You can buy a domain from Google for $8 a year and have it yourself, and then you can do a lot more stuff with it. I'm gonna show that in a minute here. And finally, the last thing you're gonna need is a Unify router, Dream Machine, or something like that, running network 7.4 or later. And that's gonna be pretty much it. Now we're gonna be able to go ahead and very easily install the OpenVPN server. But the first thing I'm gonna go over really quick is how to make sure that you can use this if you have a dynamic IP address, meaning you're not paying your ISP for a static IP address. To do this, all you need to do is basically go to Google Domains and buy a address and set up a DDNS on it. Then you just come in here to settings, internet, choose your WAN, and create a dynamic DNS. So if you're using Google, Dyn DNS actually just works. And then you put in your host name and then the username and password out of it. I already go over that in a separate tutorial that I'll leave a link to down in the description below. It works great. And now whatever host name you set here will always be updated with whatever your public IP address is. So this is what we're gonna use in the VPN server to say, hey, client, whenever you're trying to connect to the house, this is the IP address. That way, if your ISP updates your public IP address, it doesn't matter because this gets updated to point to the new IP address, meaning you don't have to update everybody's certificate file. Definitely something you wanna do. So that's super quick because there's a lot of different ways you get a DDNS server. But now the next thing we need to do is just pop into teleport and VPN, and we are going to go into VPN server. And we've got a few options here. WireGuard, which is very fast, and uses pre-shared keys to sync between the two and has ultra low latency. However, every single client needs to get their own certificate. It does not have username password authentication and the clients for like Windows and Mac 
tend to be a little bit more clunky than the OpenVPN ones are. So that's why I tend to use OpenVPN, though you can absolutely deploy a WireGuard VPN server with these exact same instructions, just using the separate WireGuard client and following essentially the same steps. Then there is OpenVPN, which is what we're going to be deploying today. And then there is L2TP over IPsec, which I would highly recommend switching off of if you're currently using. Basically, this is a Cisco protocol that has caused tons of issues. It used to be pretty open and it was great because there was a Mac client built in, there was a Windows client built in, iPhones had it built in, everybody just kind of had it built in so you didn't have to install any third-party software. But then all of a sudden there was a Windows update that broke all of them and it tends not to be that stable. So I have been using OpenVPN for a while and I have found it's kind of the best of both worlds between speed, stability, and ease of use. So we're gonna just select OpenVPN, we're gonna call this demo for video. And now for our port, we're just going to bash a few numbers together. I always bash four numbers together to select a random port. Make sure it does not start with a one just because you're more likely to run into conflicts with other ports, but 3459 should be fine. OpenVPN can run on whatever port you want it to as long as it's not blocked by your ISP for whatever reason. Okay, so now with that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and just do a couple manual settings. I always like to change the gateway slash subnet. I would change this to a 10.75.5.1. Just start with 10 and then anything's fair game after that because that way you don't run into a weird case where you go to a coffee shop that's also on 192.168.4 in this case and then you have a weird IP conflict. In general, select 10. anything between zero and 255 for the next two octets and you will be fine. 10.75.5.1 should work fine for pretty much all of y'all. So you're more than welcome to use that. And that's pretty much all we have to do. Now we're just gonna go ahead and create a new user and you can create a user for every single person or you can also start playing around with radius and doing a bunch more stuff. But we're just gonna go demo and come up with a password. Super strong password. Don't worry, I'm definitely deleting this after. Notice the passwords are stored in plain text and decoded, so just be wary of that. Anybody who has admin access will be able to see all these passwords plain text, and you can create as many users as you'd like here. Now we're just gonna go ahead and hit apply changes. And now we're come, gonna come back in, and we're gonna see that this download has gotten ungrayed out, and so we can click on it. And so we're just gonna to go to it. We're gonna go ahead and just open it with a text editor. By default, your remote right here is going to be your WAN IP address. So this will work until your IP address updates if you don't have a static IP address. And so instead, we're going to use that optional DDNS that we set up earlier. So just type in whatever DDNS address you set up there. And that is what will point your home's public IP address. Then. We have an option right here, do we want to redirect the entire gateway? So this means, do you want to send all traffic over the VPN tunnel or just local traffic? If you wanna send all traffic where essentially all of your traffic looks like it's coming from your house, this will mean that all traffic has to be routed through your house. You can leave this uncommented, but for most people who just are using this for private local access to their home assets or business assets, I would recommend adding a comment to this line right here which will mean that only local traffic will be sent in. And that should be it. I'm gonna go ahead and save it and close it. And now you're just going to want to Google OpenVPN Client Connect. So now you're just gonna to wanna to open up your web browser, download OpenVPN Connect, Google OpenVPN Connect Client, and download it for Mac or Windows. It's free and then once you've got that installed, we can just go ahead and click on it. So I'm just gonna click on this open VPN and you can see it's already set up for this. So I'm gonna double click on it. And it'll say, hey, do you want to go ahead and import this open VPN profile? Say yes, put in your username and password. This is that password we set up in the last step. And I'm gonna switch myself over to my phone. So I've just switched over to my phone's hotspot, which means that we will be connecting remotely as if I'm not in the local network. Now I can hit connect. 
and boom, just like that, I'm connected on in. And so now that I'm connected on in, I can still access my router, though it is incredibly slow due to the fact that my phone's hotspot's horrible because we have a really bad internet over here. But you can see just like that, we've got local access. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the OpenVPN and get myself back on the regular Wi-Fi. And the last thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure is that you've got any appropriate firewall rules set up. So if you've gone in and blocked all inner VLAN routing, you just need to add appropriate firewall rules to allow yourself into anything that you want access to using that subnet. Very straightforward. The VPN is gonna hand out the private IP address based off the range we set up earlier, that 10.75. And so you can just use that network to set up any firewall rules you'd like to. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. Go and leave any of the unified tutorials you'd like to see me make down in the comments below or submit them on forums.spacerex.co. And if you wanna hire me for a project, there's a link for that down in the description below. All right, have a good one. Bye.